All in all, there was about 17 locomotives in Gibraltar over a period of years. Some of them were even given names such as Catalan and Garpe, which incidentally was the last locomotive to remain in Gibraltar. Though today very little evidence of this industrial era remains, some people still have vivid memories of the railway network. We started working in the dockyard in 1969 and the trains were used very, very often uh, for many, many reasons. Uh, they used to be used to transport stores and parts to different parts of the dockyard, to supply ships as well with, with all sorts of stores and also for the collection of scrap. So. Um, it was quite a common sight. There used to be um, daily runs of the train going around the yard. The rail was not a protruding rail, it was a sunken rail with a gap. And if your bicycle wheel got caught in that, you had it. Over you went. And obviously, as a young person, I was always late on the way into work, so I was rushing into the dockyard with my bike, and many a time I got caught in the rails. My father used to be employed by the NSO, that's Naval Supply Office, and they used to do the refueling of the ships that uh, used to come into the, into the bay and into the dockyard. And uh, on that particular Sunday, we were going to take lunch. It was very busy, really. And uh, I used to go with my mom and sister, and we were taking lunch. And uh, we were going through Reclamation Road, which is now Queens Road. And there was a train that used to come out occasionally from the dockyard by the wall coming down fr from the dockyard, all alongside where the Jewish homes are above, through there, and then she used to cross the train over to where more or less is the technical college. That's where the train used to cross the road. And as we were walking towards dockyard, she was shooting away and I got very frightened. I thought they were going to catch us. <laughs> and another event regarding the boxcar, um, being very strategically placed, as I mentioned before, around the, the dockyard, uh, workers used to the, use them as a nice uh, hideaway where they could uh, sort of sky, sky from work. And in, I recall one occasion that uh, uh, four of them were caught <laughs> having a game of cards at, at work, and there was a, a big uh, hullabaloo about that and uh, decisions were taken that the boxcars had to be kept locked at all times to prevent people sort of uh, uh, getting in unofficially, so we said. But it's not just here in Jib where people seem to have an interest in the dockyard efficient railway system. Train enthusiast Michael Jackson has been a keen admirer of the Admiralty railway line for some time and is here on the rock visiting. I've always been interested in railways that are used in industry rather than the mainline big railways that most people are interested in. Well, Mike, this is a. Uh, we're inside the uh, one of the uh, one of the sheds. One of, one of the loco sheds. One of the loco yeah. sheds in here, as you can see. Well, I'm sure that you know, been a, a great train buffy must have been in some of these sheds before. They had they had the high roofs right. to allow the smoke to escape. Yeah. Probably had vents along there. Right. Yeah. This is one of, one of two that, that I know of. There was another one similar to this one on the number four dock. Mm -hmm. But this is probably the uh, the only one that survives. Or you can see that it was actually a train shed before. Yeah, with yeah. with two roads, yeah. one original door, yeah. and they've right. put in a bigger yeah. door for the the rails would have come. Company. The rails that you can see outside the rails would have come right inside here. And well, the rails are probably still here. They've oh, just yeah, built up the concrete yeah. floor. Going through the town now, yeah. absolutely no trace of it. There was ever a railway yeah. running through yeah. there. That's why when I saw the, uh, this, the, uh, this shed in here, I thought, well, we've got to bring it to light. Yeah, the majority, well, certainly the, the young generation, they would have no knowledge that this was, mm. this was a train shed. But obviously, you can see now the, the makers. Well, there's probably from, a lot of news to some people that there was even a railway. Oh yeah, running in Gibraltar. Yeah, well, this is it. When I when I refer to the railways, to many of the young generation today, they think of a modern passenger course, train. Yeah, yeah. They didn't realise it was an industrial, you know, trains that were running here to serve the dockyards. Well, I mean, this was the main yeah. system on yeah. Jib, but there were yeah. at least two other systems here yeah. that I know of. One in the waterworks, yeah. one yeah. 
for jib quarries on the other side. And how would you compare this to the railways in the docks in England? It is, uh, Very similar. Yeah, yeah. It's a sort of standard admiralty yeah. design. Yeah. This was a way of shifting equipment mm -hmm. before forklift trucks and, yeah. and rubber tired lorries. Yeah. That's what I've noticed when I've, when I've looked at old photographs. That's a great similarity in the works. And, and if you, this, this, if you look at from the outside, it's, it's a typical, what would have been a typical railway shed anywhere in the UK. Mm. Yeah, yes, yeah. Obviously, a spur track yep. coming off the main line that ran right. down the road there. Down the road. The same as the spur right. went into right. went into Oxy, where the locomotive shed was. Right. And there, there are various of these. You, you will find the uh, well, most of the sheds up here. Yeah. You know, have spur lines coming into oh, sure. them. Yeah. This you was the only way of shifting heavy machinery in those yeah. days. There were no forklift trucks or anything. Yeah. And this this will be meter gauge. Yeah. Which, which, yeah. See if you go from yeah. the inside of the rail. Right. This, yeah, um, was, this was standard to Gibraltar, the, the, the meter gauges would have been... Standard for the Admiralty. The restoration of the boxcar began in early July 2014, when local carpentry and joinery firm Rock Joinery carefully dismantled the boxcar where it stood on its siding. Each piece of wood was painfully labelled, and every nut, bolt and bracket was carefully removed and taken off site for safe storage. We numbered all the timbers, we numbered all the timbers, right, and then we, we tried to save the ones that we could save, the other ones what we, what we couldn't, well we just replaced it. Next, Jibdock Kenny provided the necessary support to remove the undercarriages from the shanting shed. They were offloaded using cranes and sandblaster to remove any rust and grit. We tried to keep about, about as much of the, of the original as possible. That's why we had to supply some of the timbers. We had to cut, cut some and insert a new piece on, them, on the bottom there and the top. Yeah, but try and keep the main timbers you know, wherever, wherever possible. Yeah, the, this, this is the original. This yeah, is the original. These are the, the original. So what we've done again, we've got season tin bank cut away here and join them together, right? And in some in some of the corners, right, this sort like this in here, we had to replicate. These are the, these this are the is original, original piece. Yeah. yeah, this is the original piece from from the side of the brackets, there. Yeah. yeah, those brackets there, and these ones here. Yeah, kindly the uh, the uh, the dockyard, you know. So, Sun blasted it for, for us and, and, and had it sprayed. So it's, we've had that, we've, to be honest with you, we've had that, we haven't had to do anything to it. In fact, the wagon, if we were to push it, rolls backwards and forwards, you know, <laughs> they are still grease the wheels. Yeah. Okay, Gil, so tell me a little bit about this photograph. Well, this is a typical train of that year, probably uh, early 1900. Yeah, this is yeah, the initial top top on Jones and Railton. It was the company that, that the, was... This is the company that manufactured the train. They were constructed to bring the trains into Gibraltar. It's got a number, they're number 28, right? Though they were, they said there were 17 trains in Gibraltar. Well, they, probably there they were more over a period of time. But this... So I've been told this shop is Gibraltarian, by the way. Yeah, and the, uh, this is probably the, yeah, a few days after the train got brought into Gibraltar. And this is next to to the shunting shell by, by the uh, by the cut in the hundred ton gun, the opposite facing wall up there. You can see two little characters that appear yeah. up there from, from the background there. Yeah. After he came into Gibraltar, they took this photograph. That's why they're posing by by the side of it. It's all seasoned, reclaimed timber from old beams all ripped down. 
but this stuff is um, this stuff's really good hemlock. So that it, it looks like the the sliding door is going to be made of, of hemlock. So that's a uh, good quality timber. Yeah. And what are you working on? Is this what you're working on now? This is good. This is going to be the uh, the sliding door as uh, that's the the final addition to the to the project. Well, at first it was uh, quite a puzzle because it was all about experimenting, trying to fit things together because the, uh, um, there wasn't really any information on what the train looked like. But um, as over time, some old photographs uh, that uh, Gil brought uh, seemed to, uh, that helped a lot. And we're a bit, bit by bit, we'd be able to piece what we could and salvage what we could. I think it looks amazing. I'm really happy with it, yeah. And uh, with the with the colour as well, you know, the original ideas of the colour really really bring it to life. You know, it really really comes to life. And uh, I think you know it's been it's quite a special project. Yeah, I'm very happy indeed, and happy for the trust as well that they, that they took this project on board. Yeah, I'd like to give everybody, you know, a, yeah, a special thanks because it was it wasn't so much my product, but there were others involved, you know, in case we haven't mentioned them, and the combined efforts have proved proved worthwhile. Yeah, I'm very happy indeed. Um, this project in particular is one the trust has had in mind for, as far as I know, at least 10 to 15 years, um, and I know that in the past what we managed to do is move it from location to location every time its storage was threatened and that in itself has managed to keep it until we managed to do a proper restoration. We had um, Gil who's really been pushing for this over the years um, willing to take it on and coordinate it. We had the, the firm in Rock Joinery who had the expertise locally to do it. Um, Jibdoc came on board and offered their support in terms of um, cranes and also sandblasting and preparing of the metal chassis. And then um, GMES who gave us somewhere to work on it undercover. So really everything just sort of like aligned and finally it's managed to, to come together really nicely.